This is the Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Make More Money Selling Your Art, proven techniques to turn your passion into profit. In the Marketing Minute, I try to answer your questions. Of course, you can always email me, eric at plenairmagazine.com. Tell me your name and town, please. Here is one from Fraser Lee in Williamsburg, Virginia. Fraser says, when are you going to talk about framing? I struggle with spending money on frames. Does it really make a difference in selling paintings? Fraser, I think you already know the answer to that. You wouldn't be asking the question, but I don't mean to belittle you. I'm not saying that, but Fraser, I'm going to be in your town in Williamsburg, Virginia this fall. We're having our figurative art convention and expo there. Maybe you should drop by. Uh, there's going to be some great framers there too, by the way. The answer to your question is yes, of course it makes a difference. If you're paying a lot of money for a painting and you live in a high-end home, you don't want a cheap frame staring out at you. And chances are you won't even buy it if it's in a cheap frame. Your house is filled with quality furniture, quality draperies, you don't want something cheap looking on your walls. Now, there are cheap looking frames and there are cheap frames that look good. You just got to find them. There are some great looking low priced frames out there. And I got to tell you the story. I think I've told this story before, but there's a gallery in the South that had a painting that sat in the gallery for a year. The gallery director said, I was getting ready to send it back to the artist, but I thought, you know what? I think it's the frame. So he took it to his framing guy, a guy who charges like $1,500 for a frame, put it in this beautiful, elegant frame, put it back on the wall and tripled the price it sold the first week. It was the frame. Framing makes a difference. Now, you may or may not want to spend $1,500 or $2,500 on frames, but I know people who do it, and it pays. Because remember, frames are kind of like cars. You know, cars are, are the frames of our lives. And if you're an affluent person and you're driving a Mercedes or a Porsche or a Bentley or a Rolls or something, those are the frames of your self-esteem. And same with your house and your front door and that big house. And, you, you know, if you've got a lot of expensive paintings in there, you don't want them in cheap frames. So think about that. Framing is about self-esteem. Put your work in good frames. And by the way, we'll see you in Williamsburg. Hope you'll drop by Figurative Art Convention. Um, we've got some amazing people coming in. For instance, Nikolai Blohin, who is the top figurative painter in Russia, taught at the academy there, greatest art school in the world. And then uh, the other greatest art school in the world, are, yes, there are maybe two, maybe three, John Michael Angel from the Angel Academy in Florence is doing a pre-convention workshop and also on stage. So since you're going to be in Williamsburg anyway, just walk across the street and come on and see us. Um, okay, here's a question from Tom Powell in Utah. Tom says, I've heard you talk about headlines and copywriting. I do copyright all my work, but I'm not sure what you mean by headlines. Well, Tom, two things. There's two kinds of copywriting. Copywriting, as you're thinking it is, copywriting your work for legal copyright. That's one kind of copywriting. What I'm talking about is copywriting. Writing copy, uh, copy meaning text to help you sell. Copy usually means selling copy, copy selling text. So for instance, um, there might be a headline in a copy or text in an ad for a website. Words really matter. They've done all kinds of tests about this. Showing a product in an ad is usually not enough. You need a headline to stop them that says, you know, stop moisture in your house today. You know, if somebody's got that problem, they're going to stop and look at that. So people who do advertising and people who do what's called direct marketing, where they're email marketing or where they're sending things in the mail, they study this. And I've read dozens of books. I've attended lots of seminars. I've bought lots of courses to learn how to write. I'm still learning every day. But every word matters, and you've got to get attention. That's why I think words and headlines and copy are so important in your ads, in your emails, your newsletters. Whatever you're writing about, you need to make sure that you've got good copy. Now, this may or may not be for you, but let me give you an example. Let's say you're uh, sending your email newsletter, and in the subject line... One version says, my latest newsletter. Another subject line says, how to make your art collection worth more money. Which one are you going to open if you're an art collector? You're going to open the second one because you want to know how to make your art collection worth more money. And plus, you know, every artist that sends something out, they're, they're sending something out, it's about me. 
right? Here's my latest newsletter. Well, who cares about your latest newsletter? Tell me something that's in the newsletter that's going to benefit me that I really want to read about. I don't know if I want to read about you. You're assuming I want to read about you. So chances are the second headline is going to get more opens because it's about the reader. It's about benefit to the reader. So always be thinking about that. Headlines matter in a lot of places. Subject lines, if they don't open the email, they're not going to read the email. If they don't read the top line, they're not going to read the second line. If they don't read the second line, they're not going to read the third line. So crafting your messaging very carefully really matters. This is all proven science. And things without good words don't get great response. I mean, even the Bible in the beginning, right? So I hope these marketing ideas have been helpful to you. This has been the Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes. You can learn more at artmarketing.com.